in January 1996, Artur Zmiński was mentioned here yesterday, and Grzegorz Kowalski as curators with 11 other young artists. With the 11 other young artists from the famous Kowalski's workshop at Warsaw Fine Arts Academy, opened an exhibition in the gallery placed in the cinema hall uh, entitled Ja i Aids, Me and Aids. It was up only for one day because the cinema's director ordered to close it. As the director claimed, 13 works shown in, a, in this unobvious space, still marked by the aesthetics of former communist regime, so it was paneling on the walls, ferns in flower pots everywhere, were not suitable for the young public uh, visiting the cinema during the day. Naked bodies on video, in sculptures or, or on photos were shocking, disturbing, and above all, shown in the context of AIDS, they were very dangerous. As Susan Zontag famously wrote, AIDS is a metaphor, a clinical concept that in the social imagination became equal with death for the sins. AIDS meant punishment, impurity, and unethical behavior. It was perceived as scandalous in its nature. But Polish artists addressed AIDS not as an illness, but as a social condition uh, of those who are not sick. Uh, Artur Zmijewski, as Marina Weiss wrote, me and AIDS is an answer of, an, of the exhibiting authors to the existence of the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. That's all they were capable of, and let's not expect, expect anything more. They were dealing with the imagined subject, not the experience of the illness. Presumably, none of them is infected. Uh, in the three minutes long video by Zmijewski entitled Me and AIDS, that I treat as a the theoretical resume of the exhibition's significance. We observe two naked men, one of them is the artist, collide with each other like cars in the car trash, the cash crash test. Then the same is happening between naked women and naked author. The closing gaps of the bodies show them not as objects of desire, but rather a source of fear and violence. Invisible, impossible to detect the danger can lurk in those bodies. Their nakedness doesn't show or uncover it. It is the very source of the fear. At the end, we see the artist sitting on the floor. He stretches his arms, ready to hug someone, but instead he starts to clap. Paradoxical individuality is born from the impossible closeness and fear of the other body. Other works by Paweł Arthammer, Edyta Daczka, Katarzyna Górna, Andrzej Karaś, Grzegorz Kowalski, Katarzyna Kozyra, Ryszard Lech, Krzysztof Marec, Małgorzata Michberg, Jacek Markiewicz, Jędrzej Niestrój and Monika Osiecka, like to give you some Polish sounds, were in different forms and mediums establishing and playing with the same fear of other. They were creating the space of community crisis. Me and Aids and Zmijewski's work specifically represents what will become called critical art at the end of the decade. This notion was first used by Ryszard Kuszczyński and popularized by Izabela Kowalczyk's book entitled Ciało i Władza, Body and Power. The critical gesture was understood as revealing, showing what is unobvious, what stays under the skin, what is unclear and marginal, end of quote. The whole idea of criticism was based on one quotation from Michel Foucault, cited what's important after Bauman, uh, and the quotation goes like that. A critique is not a matter of saying that things are not right as they are. It is a matter of pointing out on what kinds of assumptions, what kinds of familiar and challenged and considered modes of thought, the practices that we accept rest. Practicing criticism is a matter of making facile gestures difficult. And uh, this is kind uh, of anecdotal thing, but uh, this quotation was circling in this form the, through all the texts about critical art. But uh, if you go to the original text of Foucault, the passus just before this quotation that, um, is uh, about transformation which will be kind of important. 
and it wasn't like this gesture was never done in, in writing, so no one really checked where, where this quotation is nestled in Foucault's book. Uh, as much as it was putting the artistic practice of the so-called Kovalnya in the context of critical theory and making it dependent of Western discourses, the critical art notion was and is interesting as it makes body its chosen medium no matter of what material form the art takes. In frames of critical art notion, there is no difference if we watch film, photo, sculpture, installation or performance. It is understood as art of the body, putting the body in the very center as the tool of the critique in constant clash with the power. Uh, in critical art, the question of actual medium is secondary, if not uninteresting. Uh, to the understanding of the importance of this theoretical stand, the fact of the censorship of me and AIDS is crucial. In fact, which is also kind of interesting, the, the exhibition didn't disappear after this censorship uh, gesture. It was moved from the capital city to other places in Poland. It was shown in Polsk, Bydgoszcz, and Gdańsk, and became quite well documented and meaningful event, as in this retrospective, as something that we can uncover was censorship, but survived this censorship, and in this retroverse movement, it became significant. Paweł Althammer, Artur Zmijewski, Katarzyna Kozyra taking part in this exhibition became the most known and recognized Polish contemporary artists. But I would like to propose to revisit me and AIDS not as a social scandal or clash of the progressive and conservative attitude shaping the dynamic of conflict in Poland till today, but rather as an incident of the so-called transformation economic, political, and social process symbolically started with the fall of communist regime in 1989. Transformation is a void and false category. It is a Polish version of the transition taken from Dictionary of American Political Studies. It was coined to describe changes of political systems in the South American countries in the 60s and 70s as Boris Wood and Croatian theoretician of culture rights. Political studies were always looking at the cases of regime changes from retrospective. The, the, they were trying to draw their conclusions from the historical experience ex post. End of quote. But in the case of Eastern Europe, the transition understood as affectively charged transformation became not the description of the changes, but rather their strictly defined goal. The logic of transformation is clear. The communist system with its past, politics and ideology is bad. The only possible direction is capitalism, free market and liberal, liberal politics. The path is also very well known and it should repeat the path of the Western countries. To be like on the West will become the definition of, by the same, by the same token, impossible transformation. This character of the notion that falsely named, shaped, and enclosed the living experience of the 19th decade in Poland can be paradoxically useful. In, in English, transformation means a complete change in the appearance or character of something or someone, especially so that that thing or person is improved. A complete change is a process that requires limima, liminal moment of suspension, when one is no longer what she was and not yet what she will become, so well described in the anthropology of culture. This moment is a source of deep crisis that is, that is somehow contained by the temporary communities and the structure that, is, that in course of change will become the new structure. But in Polish case, transformation is open-ended. It doesn't have any finish line. The vague like on the West cannot be reached and fulfilled. That's why I propose to understand transformation as a notion describing the supposedly unidir not as a notion describing supposedly unidirectional social, economic, political progress happening rapidly in the 90s, but the deep crisis of identity, language, social structure inscribed in the falsely simplified version and understanding of those changes. Let's return to the fact of closing the exhibition Me and Aids by the director of the cinema. 
The shock he experienced seeking, seeing artistic works was caused, in my opinion, by the power of the body and embodiment. In context of illness, bodies on screens shown as sculptures are invisibly present in his cinema hall, which is quite also interesting. It was cinema, it was supposed to serve to see. And we're becoming intrusively present. For him, like possibly for a most part of the society, equipped with sense of aesthetics formed by prudishness of communist regime and Catholic Church, they were impossible to look at. The images and videos, as well as differently material, materialized bodies, were what, what one cannot or refuse to see, and from that very gesture, they were, they were taking their political power. The artworks were not making the AIDS and the infected people visible, but they were staging the impossibility to see, to look, to grasp, understand and name. The impossibility of the image was, which was invaded by the violence of naked bodies. With the example, I claim that the political power of art in the time of Polish transformation comes from putting the image on hold, breaking representation with intrusive presence, revealing the violence of the embodiment. It was possible in that specific historical moment, visibility politic will soon fix the relation between image and identity, oppressing the body with its representation. That moment of the reconfiguration of the visual field in Poland, the liminal state between absence and fixed representation, I would like to call transformation. It tells different, different story than emancipation, and allows to see in the progressing visibility the growing crisis resulting in diverse political possibilities and dangers. What enables critical art in politics is exactly this crisis, which at the same time marks its end. Using the void character of the notion of the transformation, I would like to go against its logics and see it not as describing Polish race to catch up with the West, but as a lens through which the universal crisis of visibility can be seen. The symptoms of this crisis were observed, for example, by Peggy Fenel. In 1993, in New York, she published Unmarked, The Politics of Performance. The book became one of the most important theoretical texts of for performance studies. It enabled, it enabled, the, enabled the discipline to extend its field limited to theater and engage anthropology of culture and include also radical contemporary art. The book became fundamental in defining the political power of performance. From the famous statement that performance becomes itself through disappearance and that to the degree that performance attempts to enter the econ economy of Mm, reproduction it betrays and lessens the promise of its own ontology. The conclusion was drawn that performance based on the rule of ephemerality and disappearance is anti-capitalistic and political by its nature. That thought, that thought sparked an important critique. Philip Auslander and Rebecca Schneider, for example, limiting their discussion with Felan to the last chapter of the book we're showing that it is exactly ephemerality that constitutes capitalistic ideology invading performance. Thinking about authentic, unrepeatable, unrepeatable uh, genuine character of the performance experience is making it a perfect commodity. Underlying disappearance as the logic of performance is denying the body its political power to remain and remember. But what is missing in understanding of the concept of ephemerality proposed by Felon is the context in which she formulated that notion. In frames of what I want to propose here, this context should be, let's say, Polish transformation. Uh, the main term proposed by the author is unmarked, nestled in the Lacanian psychoanalysis, post-structuralist philosophy and feminism to define the political potential of the unseen. In the introduction, introduction she wrote, by locating a subject in what cannot be reproduced within the ideology of the visible, I'm attempting to revalue a belief in subjectivity and identity which is not visibly representable. This is not the same thing as calling for greater visibility of the here, her, 
unseen. End of quote. What is rar rarely underlined and marked offers a fervent critique of politics of visibility, dominating in the cultural theory from the 80s, uh, which is with its implicit assumption that to be seen means to be politically agent. For Fallon, focused on gendered and racialized other, it is quite the opposite. To be visible means to be named, fixed, and arrested as representation. Representation in her text uh, holds its double meaning. After Judith Butler, it is understood as what stays in constant, confusing relation with real. The real is read through representation, and representation is read through the real. And at the same time, representation is the logics of politics. Uh, but to see uh, in public some, like this is from Felon, she's making these examples. To see in public space black people doesn't mean to acknowledge blackness. To show more women in television doesn't mean to introduce feminism. One representing others is not a transparent and innocent strategy. That's why representation, which always produces a certain surplus, it shows more than it intends, and is never totalizing, it fails to show everything, needs to be ruptured, destabilized, by what is not given to be seen. Unmarked are the subjects impossible to name, not represented and not representing anything they gain truly political potential. Unmarked are bodies becoming a stage of the play between identity and gaze. Transsexual, doubled in theater and by pregnancy, mirrored, repeated, dressed up, and naked, those bodies in Fenland's text escape the marking power of image and word, gaining the right to be unseen. This is what she defines as performance, the act of being actively unseen, disappearing and disabling the representation. When she states that performance becomes itself through disappearance, she defines ephemerality as politically charged. And now, um, uh, I found this very interesting um, passage in Mirzaev's uh, history, to, uh, How to See the World, which is kind of summarized the 90s. It was in 1990s that this visual uh, culture of performance became visible in the United States, extending from the avant-garde to academia and to the mainstream. He uses the example of Jenny Livingstone's documentary Paris is Burning from 1990, uh, extensively analyzed by Felon as politically false, and Madonna adopting the voguing for her hit Vogue the same year. He states, in a related vein, the philosopher Judith Butler published her classic book, Gender Trouble, which showed how drug reveals gender itself to be a performance. And in both the United States and United Kingdom, the degrees in visual culture were offered at the University of Rochester and Middlesex University for the first time. The, the establishing, uh, like then, the end of quote, the, the establishing of visual politics and visual studies required the image to be fixed as representation and representational politics fixed as emancipation. More and more identities needed that representation to be seen an agent. For Felon, this is the source of danger. She states, under the ever-growing shadow of the politically powerful new right in the United States, I'm writing against the perpetual fracturing of disciplines, specializations, and identities progressive political and critical theory has wrought. The end of quote. The left is weakened, and identity politics anchored in the logic of representation doesn't work. She postulates new politics, aware of the traps of brought by image. Unmarked is an answer to the circulation of images, commodities, the escape from capitalism, but not just because performance breaks up with artifacts production and gets lost in time. Fennan discovers ephemerality as underestimated immateriality. Immateriality that is not directed against the body and embodiment, but uses it to discover what cannot be seen or shown, she states. But what would it take to value the immaterial within a culture structured around the equation material equals value? 
as critical theories of cultural reproduction became increasingly dedicated to a consideration of the material conditions that influence, if not com completely determine, social, racial, sexual, and psychic identities, questions about the immaterial construction of identities, those processes of belief which summon memory, sight, and love, fade from the eye. The end of quote. Between artistic practice of Robert Mapplethorpe, Cindy Sherman, Mira Shaw, Yvonne Reiner, Tom Stoppard, Angelica Festa, between photography, paintings, video, dance, theater, and performance art, the idea of political art, in my view, that of transformation instead of emancipation, is created. Ephemeral, immaterial, and unmarked performances that disappear and escape the view are the answer to the visibility crisis and capitalism as such. That such an ephemerality is possible and politically important will be proven by José Esteban Muñoz in his, in his famous text from 1996, entitled Ephemera as Evidence. Building the fundaments of queer theory, he writes, thus I want to propose queerness as a possibility of sense of self-knowing, a mode of sociality and relationality, Queerness is often transmitted covertly, instead of being clearly available as visible evidence, queerness has instead existed as innuendo, gossip, fleeting moments and performances that are meant to be interacted with by those within its epistemological sphere, while evaporating at the touch of those who would eliminate queer possibility. The end of quote. Around the end of, the, of 1993, Derek Jarman finished his last film, Blue. It's called his testament as he died of AIDS two months after, in February 1994, in London. The screen shows nothing but the blue color for the whole time. Supposedly, this is the last color the author saw before he lost his sight due to the illness. And the quotation from the film narration, the doctor in San Bartholomew's hospital thought he could detect lesions in my retina. The pupils dilated with belladonna. The torch shone into them with a terrible blinding light. Look left, look down, look up, look right. Blue flashes in my eyes. We hear in the film. Uh, called the most shocking film in cinema history, Derek German's Blue denies showing anything. It is not only the metaphor nestled in the biography of the author, it is also the conscious act of the escape. In the other moment of the film we can hear, for accustomed to be living in image, an absolute idea of value, his word uh, had forgotten the command of essence. Thou shalt not create unto thyself an engraven image, although you know the task is to fill the empty page. From the bottom of your heart, pray to be released from image. This is what keeps the light from reaching us. The image is a prison of the soul. Your heredity, your education, your vices and aspirations, your qualities, your psychological world. The end of quotation. There is no more telling way to question the 1990s culture of image and its assumed power to emancipate those who are oppressed. In this uh, refined way, German, film director and painter, opens a space of ephemerality and performance. The text we hear is immaterializing the illness, the body is scripted by words and sounds. But the image is not made obsolete. Blue is a film, after all. The image is rather destroyed, violently attacked, ruptured by the color, language, sound and body escaping the visibility. AIDS, one of the most powerful metaphors of crisis shaping the political landscape of 90s, cannot bring emancipation. The subjectivity it creates cannot be represented. It is liminal and finds its expression in fatal transformation. What I would like to stress is that ephemerality that Ferran understood as the only way to leave the body and the subject unmarked, unseen, undefined, not represented, can be understood in German's film not as a lack, absence of something, but as an intrusive presence of living, dying, and dead bodies. Returning to Poland of the 90s, it is worth reminding that ephemeral means also transitory. 
Transition or transformation means a crisis, but it also means a political art, opening today already forgotten possibilities of community and subjectivity outside of representation and image. I claim that it is worth revisiting. And just uh, last phrase, but revisiting as history. This is what I would like to stress. Nineties should be treated as something. Uh, something from, like, it should be seen in terms of history, not our present time.